Welcome to the program. Russia's undeclared war in eastern Ukraine has gone on for almost five years, reaching a lasting ceasefire and enforcing it. The chances of that are now almost zero. Russia's attack on the Ukrainian Navy, the capture of 24 Ukrainian sailors and several Ukrainian vessels, has left uh, many calling for a resolute response from the West. This has not materialized. Joining us to discuss the U.S. response to Russia is Joni Ernst. She is a Republican Iowa senator. She's also the fourth highest ranking Republican in the Senate and one of the most powerful women in the country. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. It is a pleasure to be with you. You've had a couple of meetings uh, since arriving to Kiev and we're now at the Ministry of Defense and you've met uh, General Muzhenko. How, how did that meeting go? It was a, a wonderful meeting and he and his staff gave a clear overview of what is going on with the Russian aggression in uh, Ukraine. And it is very concerning to see what is not only happening every day here on the ground, but as you mentioned, uh, the attack on the naval forces, which we still have a number of those sailors, 24 sailors that are still being held by the Russians. It is very, very concerning. But then he also was able to paint a picture of what could happen if the Russians are left unchecked. What do you make of the uh, response that U.S. President Donald Trump uh, following the attack in the Black Sea, what do you make of it? Do you think it was strong enough? I think it should be stronger. Anytime that we see uh, Russians uh, attacking other sovereign nations, we should have an immediate response, a very firm response. Um, we intend to do all that we can to assist our Ukrainian friends. I'm very pleased to see that you still want to push forward with uh, potential NATO mem membership at some point, and we see that as very positive. So we want to do what we can to make sure we are supporting our U Ukrainian friends. Would you say that uh, President Trump's uh, somewhat ambiguous policy towards Russia emboldens uh, Putin? Well, I'd love to see a stronger response. What you will see coming from Congress, though, is a very unified response, regardless of our party and our background and the regions that we're from in the United States. Uh, I would say, by and large, um, almost all members of Congress firmly believe that we need to push back against Russian influence and its aggression, no matter where it is. The Munich Security Conference has ended recently, and uh, leaders from across the world gathered to talk about different policies, and one of the issues was the Russia's undeclared war in eastern Ukraine. And something that was mentioned, a proposal for creating a common defense infrastructure in Europe. It was proposed by a German politician. Um, this would essentially divide US and European security. What do you make of this? Ukraine would be part of this, of course, but it would be separate. Of course, would want to know more about the policy. Um, I do think that we need to step up efforts here in Eastern Europe, of course, as we see Russia continuing to be emboldened and, and pushing out not only in Ukraine, but in other regions as well. Uh, they have a tendency to operate just below the threshold of actual uh, armed conflict in many areas. So not only do you have an active war here in Ukraine, but you have other what we call gray zone activities going on with electronic warfare, cyber attacks, things of that nature. So again, going back, I would want to make sure that whatever we're doing, it is a cohesive effort to push back against Russia. You are on the Senate, uh, Senate Armed Services Committee, and um, after the attack, uh, many analysts and politicians were asking for, uh, for Ukraine to uh, receive lethal aid in the form of anti-ship missiles, raiders, intelligence, um, surveillance systems, uh, that sort of additional lethal aid. Is that something that could be considered potentially? After that attack, we did allocate an additional $10 million. Um, and uh, as far as the specifics of the $10 million, we'll leave that up to our subject matter experts, um, those that are, are selling those arms, those that are acquiring those arms. But I do think that when it comes to lethal aid, we need to make sure that we are providing access to that for our Ukrainian partners. 
is the U.S. Con considering greater punitive measures? Absolutely. I think the United States is always considering what additional sanctions they can place upon uh, Russia. And it is very important that we make sure that they're actually effective and something that we can follow through on. Um, just messaging is great in itself, but we want to make sure that whatever we are passing is actually working and is uh, inhibiting Russia. We haven't seen a lot of inhibition so far. Uh, we'd like to take that further. Further be um, a similar um, strategy that the U.S. Has, has towards Iran. For example, Iran's president recently described U.S. sanctions as economic war is more difficult than military war. Uh, why? Why isn't the Trump administration considering uh, more of a strategy that they're employing towards Iran, um, perhaps towards Russia? We should, and, and what we hear uh, from Iran is uh, very vocal, you know, death to America. Russia is not as vocal in its threats. It's more subversive. Um, I think if we saw that coming from Russia, I think the administration would be more apt to go and be a little bit more forceful. Uh, with Russia, but we know that Russia is a threat. We see their influence around the globe, and, and again, we need to make sure that we're inhibiting that. So if there are additional sanctions that could be employed against Russia, I certainly would be a supporter of that. For example, asset, asset freezes of Russian banks. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, this is something that was, was mentioned that every three months a, a Russian bank would be, uh, have its assets frozen by the US. This would be clearly a very effective strategy that Putin would instantly notice. Absolutely. <laughs> is that? <laughs> it is, it, we will continue working on the sanctions, of course, but as I said, anything more that we can do uh, to inhibit Russia, I think is a good idea. What's the strategy now, as far as you know, in terms of dealing with Russia? It is to continue working with Ukraine and our other, other allies, too, on ways that we can work together. It does have to be a whole-of-government approach. It, it can't be just providing lethal aid to Ukraine. It has to be through other means as well, non-governmental organizations that can help the Ukrainian people, and making sure that those efforts are, are properly funded and supported will be very important. But then also making sure that our other friends and allies in NATO see the importance of supporting Ukraine. Ukraine and uh, pushing back against Russia as well. You're now visiting uh, Ukraine and you're learning more about the different programs that the U.S. is supporting. Um, the rehabilitation program for, for veterans, for Ukrainian veterans coming back from the war zone. Uh, what's your take on that? It is very important, and any time, I will use the United States as an example, any time that we are employing our young men and women and sending them into harm's way, we need to ensure that we have the means to support them and rehabilitate them when they return from war. That is so important, whether they are the physical wounds of war or the unseen wounds of war. Um, I've worked on a number of those initiatives in the United States as well, whether it's traumatic brain injury, um, other physical injuries that our soldiers, airmen, marines might, might uh, suffer. But it is very important that we support our veterans. Do you see yourself potentially working on some sort of initiatives or programs here in Ukraine to help war veterans dealing with um, unseen wounds such as PTSD? and uh, any sort of psychological uh, problems that they suffer when they return. Certainly, and if that's an issue that I can, I can work with a Ukrainian delegation, we have our own programs in the United States that we have in place. I think they've been, they've been effective. Can we do more? Certainly we need to do more. Um, and we'd be happy to work on those initiatives as well with your Ukrainian veterans. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us today. Absolutely. It means a lot to be here. Thank you. We've been joined by Joni Ernst. She's a Republican Iowa senator. Uh, she's visiting here in Kiev, and you're watching UATV.